just move into the first movement. So there, there's there's different ways we can do this, right? So we're going to inhale when we get to this height. So we can start slower. You could just be here with it. And as the body warms up and it opens, then the hands come up a little higher. It seems like your feet are like pressing into the ground like Jefferson. What's that? It seems like your feet are pressing into the ground like Jefferson. That looks so like remember how we had that weight shift? Yeah, no, I'm so, not. So I'm, just, I'm looking yeah. at your feet and they're just like sinking and sinking. Right, because we're constantly sinking and dropping. Okay. So the more you can sink your energy, the, the more energy is going to come up. Mm. So, so the more you, so, so you're sustaining and having that sinking going on the entire time. Mm -hmm. So my hands are just riding that wave, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm talking about? So, you so, mentioned so, it to her the other day. Huh? You mentioned it to yeah. her the other yeah. day. Yeah. But, but the more you're able to sink and drop your energy, there's going to be a natural rising, and you're just you're just riding that. Okay. Thank you. Going back to your question, so the more you're able to drop and sink your energy, there's going to be a natural rising. So as the energy rises, we're trying to lengthen the tissues in the body. So it's easy to focus on on the arms, easy to focus on the arms and the legs. You, you want, if I'm exaggerating, you want to feel, I'm exaggerating, but you see how my torso is lengthening? Or so I'm, Pushing my feet into the ground, exactly. and that pushing into the ground is causing this opening, this rising. So it's going both ways, is what I thought I was yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're lengthening through the arms and the legs, but the torso also has to be involved. Right? So, so the, the space in the spine is going. You're going to get more space in the spine, but th that that's taking pressure off the internal organs, like, like mechanically. Mm -hmm. It's like, no. I'll have space, the pressure comes off the organs. I'm going to exhale, the arms are going to drop. That's going to pressurize the organs. Right, so there's a, like an accordion effect going on. And it's increasing, you know, lymphatic fluid movement and it's pumping more blood in the body. Especially this one here, right? It's, it's like, that, that. Say something about how it goes through your head and it seems like there's also a tether going on up. Well, it's the, it's the whole spinal movement. Right? The crown of the head and the tailbone holds one piece. That, that whole line. Yes. Yes. Right. So as you inhale, the arms come up. Your weight goes to the ball of the foot. And then as you exhale, the arms drop. You're going into your heels. Right, so, so the whole body's in motion. Because you know, it's easy to just stand here and move your arms, right? and you're not engaging the rest of the body. That's it. Felt the difference? And what I notice also is I have a tendency to narrow in my hips and my sacrum, and so I'm, I'm finding my weight to be lengthier, but also facing down there. 
Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of? yeah. Think, think three dimensional, not, not just not one plane. Yeah. yeah. Not plane. You want to relax into this. Yeah, you're you're finding a space from from a releasing, not not, not from pushing a stretch. Let it go. Let it go. And let's look at the second movement. We're going to move at different speeds. You want to find your rhythm. So your breath drives the movement. Make sure your shoulders stay relaxed and you keep the neck open. Right, right. You want to get this lifting here at the neck with the cervical vertebrae and make sure you drop the shoulders. The shoulder blades, the, we're using the large muscles of the back and shoulders to bring the arms to the side. You want to lift the head, drop the shoulders relax the arms. Be, be aware of this area behind the collarbone as you're doing the movement. You, you want to feel movement behind here. Yeah, there, there's a lot of lymphatic tissue and blood vessels back here. Yep. In this area, there's a big exchange. You want to feel this area open. Shoulders have been trying to do the movement, you feel like it's, it's restricted. So, the, the physicality of the movement is going to pump fluids. So, you're trying to maximize this. Well, you want to relax into the body so the body starts to open up so you're not impeding circulation. So behind the collarbone, there's like the subclavian vein. So the blood drains out of the brain via the jugular vein that empties into the subclavian vein back to the heart. Right, the lymphatic system drains into the subclavian vein. Yeah, so, so all this lymphatic fluid, it, it empties that into this area. So when we're doing these movements, but the arms are in motion, but it's opening up this whole area. You like it easy. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> I think it's helpful, you know, like in the past I would have teachers, I would ask questions, they said, just do. No, just do. You find out. Just do. <laughs> I, that, did, that doesn't work for me. My, my Chinese teachers on Oahu, just do. No ask questions. You find out. Just do. It's like, okay. <laughs>
one more time. And third movement. It's a full weight shift. Something about the breathing pattern again, I got it on. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. exhale. Alright, so just mechanically, as you come back up, that, that movement forces you to inhale. And when you go the other way, as the arm drops, it's forcing an exhale. This arm drops, and you feel something sinking in that side of your body. So you want to feel that sinking going all the way to your feet and to the earth. As you come back up, something rises up that side of the body, and something descends on the opposite side. So you, you're trying to find this pumping where there's no break. Yeah, this is continuous back and forth, so, so you're, you're getting this pumping going on. How's everyone doing with this? Back to center, arms drop. Back to just standing, let everything drop and sink. Just have everything kind of settled, stabilized. With this movement of the arms, you know, again, you know, like this area between the collarbone, the, the vasculature, and the, the lymphatic system. Right? There's, there's a lot of lymphatic tissue through the through this area of the body, right between the ribs, up here at the throat. Right there, there's all these rich blood vessels, right? The blood's coming from the heart and it needs to move on into the arms and up the neck into the brain. So th this area, the torso, just the vasculature. So when we're doing these movements, getting this opening is important because we're opening up the circulation. And a lot of people have tension right through here. Think about this, this area of the shoulder. You want this whole thing to open up. And so, where my arm is in space on this plane, you can kind of play with that, you can kind of feel how it opens up this area in the ribs. So, as, as you inhale, this is coming up. As you exhale, this is dropping. But the inhale, ex, you know, so. There's a mechanical pumping going on. So as you go through the movements, you're mechanically pumping fluids. And that, that's going to start to get the tissues to open up. And because what's ultimately going to get the tissue to fully release is when the vascular system releases from inside the tissues and the, and the, and the system opens up. Yes, it's not from a stretch. It's not from a, uh, trying to make it open. Yeah, but when the when your blood flow opens up through those tissues, the, the, the tissues the tissues are open.
it, it is one of the few forms where you're getting this movement in the spine. And, and we're looking at getting the spine to open up. Right, so the nerves that innervate the internal organs, they come off of the spine segment. In the sympathetic nervous system, the branches come out of the spine into the organs. So when we're doing these movements, we're getting this compression in the organs, right? We're massaging the organs, but this movement of the spine, we're getting the spine to open up. So it's going to increase cerebral spinal fluid movement. But it's also getting the nervous system to relax the sympathetic branches out into the internal organs. You know, so like digestive issues and people have anxiety and issues like that. A little geeking on some of the movements. But the movements are simple, but they do a lot. How are we doing? Any questions? So the, the spine is one piece, from the top of your head to the tailbone, it's one piece. So 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 you're trying so you're trying to have the whole piece move as a unit, and in the beginning you're not going to feel that, right? Because you can have like rib fixations that that can do that that can mess up the movement. You can have something going on in the internal organ that's going to pull on the spine. Because the organs, their, their eventual attachment is right onto the spine. So this is a pretty brilliant form. It's, it's easy for people to learn. When you do start th teaching Tai Chi, th this is the, <laughs> we're going to do this form. We're understanding this form and, and the Tai Chi form. Okay. First thing we're going to look at is we're going to start making circles with the hands. Palms face each other. Hands are making a circle. You want to use your shoulder blades to move the arms. So, you got to face here first and then the other way? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, like the previous form, how the shoulders are, the shoulder blades are the root of the arm, you want to move from the root. Because it's easy to just move your hands. And if you just do the hand motion, you feel like there's a disconnect between your hands and your torso. You want to have this, this, this is a circle, and it's coming from the movement of the shoulders. This is coming from the movement of the shoulders. Right, so the shoulder blades are in constant motion. Again, the movement is going to open up neck, chest, shoulders. Same thing, you need to lift your neck, keep the neck open, drop the shoulders, and then feel the space behind your collarbone, feel, feel through your armpits. Can you move on your feet at the same way we did the other one? Mm -hmm. and so as you come up, your weight's on the balls of the foot. As the hands come back and down, you're in your heel. So same action with the foot. So the principles are the same with all the forms. They're, they're just applied differently. The same principles apply to all the forms. And the circle. Yeah, so the arms and legs are moving together. So, so, so arms and legs extend, arms and legs bend, arms and legs extend. We're just looking at the upper body. So let, let's kind of refine this movement. So if we do shoulder rolls. So make this circle half as big. And how smooth can you have this? So so there's like a, a range of motion, right? There's a circle. How smooth and circular 
can you do this movement? You know, you want to have this movement happen without any glitches. And then make that smaller. So you, you want to have this circle happen where it's almost invisible. When we're, when we're doing these movements, you're making a little circle with, without lifting the shoulders. The, the circle's happening inside the shoulder girdle. So you're making a circle that's so small that you can't see it because it's happening inside the shoulder girdle. And the circle goes both directions. The shoulder blades are always moving. There's always some degree of movement in the shoulder blade. It seems like the hips are mimicking it. Yes. Much yes. Degree. Yes. Like I said, we're just looking at the upper body. Yeah. All the joints in your body are doing that. The last form, we looked at how the elbows stay connected to the spine. You're doing the same thing here. So the tip of the elbow faces the ground. And as the hands come away from the spine, you need to keep them, you need to keep that connection with the spine the entire time. So in both directions. The circle goes one way, goes the other way. So the shoulder blades and the shoulders move the arms, elbows face the ground, elbows stay connected to the spine. I'm sorry? Uh, you know, right, right now, it's you, you want to feel these things in the body. You know, so can, can you like feel, what does it feel like when your shoulder blades engage? What does it feel like when the elbows are dropped? And can you feel a connection with your spine the entire time? This elbow connection is important. Movements of the form are designed, the movements of the form are designed to massage the internal organ. So we need to make these connections in the body to connect it to the internal organ. So in the, with the arms, the elbows need to stay connected to the spine. Because that connection is going to put the pressure into the belly. So when you disconnect the elbow, you lose the pressurization. So it's tricky because left and right arm need to be balanced to, to get an even pressurization. And so, so the shoulders are making this invisible circle. So the movement's continuous. There's no out and then in. You know, there, there's no break. It, it's a continuous circular motion. And that circularity is important, right? It, it's pumping fluids in the body. It, it's moving energy, but it also a lot, it helps your nervous system to release. So you're going to notice, so the shoulders are making a circle, and the elbows are going to make, be making a bigger circle in space. So, so there's a circle that the elbow is making. But there's a thing called the five poles in the body. 
like, like a bow and arrow. So it's the bowing of both arms, both legs, and your spine. But the bowing is also happening in your hands. So it's not just, your, your hands need to be active. So, so there's this bowing going on in your hands. And when my, hand, when my arms extend, my fingers are extending. And my arms are coming back. Yeah, it, it, it's um, we're, we're setting up the conditions for that to happen, yeah. right? The bending, bending and stretching, then when that's stable, then so I'm looking at setting up, setting up the foundation so that can happen. We did a little bit of that in standing where nervous system, soft tissue, and release your joints. You, you want to get used to standing where you relax enough that your joints open up. Because when we're doing these movements, your joints need to be open. You need to be able to have your joints relax. So, so we're setting up the conditions for success. Our society conditions us to push and contract all the time. <laughs> like, oh, you know, stress and like, I need to protect myself. I can't be vulnerable. I need, I, you know, I need to be tough, right? All, all this, all this contraction and holding in the body. So, so we're looking at releasing these things. So when we're doing the movements, can you release the tension? Can you release the tensions in the joints? Everybody thinks nervous system is soft tissue. What about the tension in your joints? The tensions in the internal organs, the tensions in your vascular system. So, so we're setting up the conditions so the releasing goes that deep. So we're gonna connect the body together. We're lengthening the tissues, right? These are things we talked about in the last class. You, you want to have everything connect when you do that. Right, so the amount my hand is opening, the amount that the space between my wrist and elbow moves is connected to my hand. The amount my arms extend out in space is connected to what's going on in my hand. You know, so when my arms go forward, everything is opening, everything's releasing and lengthening in that direction. So everything from your shoulder to your fingertips opens and lengthens evenly. Because you're going to feel it choppy. You're not going to feel it smooth in the beginning. Again, the practice is a process, so if you want to practice getting this nice even releasing and lengthening from your shoulders all the way out to your fingertips and technically it's from your spine through the shoulder through the musculature in the shoulders and the shoulder blades out to the fingertips and, and when you first start it's not going to be smooth you're going to feel places where it's, it's glitchy so the practice is about you know, we're, we're, we're practicing, we're, we're doing these things, trying to get that smoothness. And it circles in both directions. Mostly lengthening with less muscle flexion. It's flexion extension. Okay. We're just looking at the arms. Yeah, we're, we're, we're like, we, we need to layer in all the pieces because if we try to do the legs, arms, and spine at the same time, it's going to be impossible. Sorry. 
So as the arms extend, do you have an even pressure in each finger? Or as, you, or as you do this, do the fingers feel different? Right, there's a different meridian line that comes out each finger. Somehow smooth. One way to think about the practice is this is a practice of hydraulics. Yeah, we're, we're moving we're very strongly moving fluids in the body. This movement of the hand, we're, we're turning our hand into a pump. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Hydraulic and plumbing. Like plumbing. Right. Or, or like the brakes in your car when you piss in, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. hydraulic pressure. So this movement. It's pumping blood, it's pumping, it's pumping fluids and energy to the head. Because initially when we started, people were focusing on the shoulders, but nothing was going on with the head. People were holding tension to the head. You know, a lot of people do the movement like this, but you see the tension in my hand? The tension in my hand is blocking blood flow. Right? The tensions in your body is blocking energy flow and blood flow, so fluid movement. Again, the sense of relaxing and releasing the tissue. As my arms move forward, you're releasing all the tensions in the arm out to the fingers. And um, if you get it, as the arms move forward, you're going to literally feel something moving from your torso to your arms out to your fingers. And when the hands and arms come back, you're going to feel something coming back into your torso. I mean, it, it, it's a literal felt sense of the fluid moving in the body. And the question is, how smooth can you get that movement? So in the beginning, you're thinking blood flow, and then as you get better, it, it's actually becomes like the microcirculation, right? The interstitial fluid. Think, think of the movement on that kind of level. Both directions. Not there yet, <laughs> but I, I do want to mention this. So I keep talking about that elbow connection because that connection is going to allow you to connect to your spine and the internal organ. So the whole time you're doing this movement, there, there's a sense of massaging your internal organ. I, I, I want to see if I can. Exaggerate that, right? If I just do this, if you watch my torso, there's nothing going on in my torso, right? I, I, I just, I'm just moving my arm. But if I deliberately keep the connection, right? You, can you see this movement in my torso? See how this is? The, the entire time I'm doing this movement, my arms stay connected to my organs. So when I move my arms, there, there's this massaging going on in the organ. So 
we're, we're layering in the skill sets to allow these things to happen. So the whole time we're doing this movement, pay attention to the connection with your elbow and the spine and the torso. As the arms move away from the body, you should feel a connection to your spine. As the arms come back, you should feel it in your organs. You can feel that in your belly. And, and I, I'm, I'm exaggerating that, so you want to just slowly have that awareness, make those connections. So the whole time you're doing the movement, your whole body's in motion. Again, Qigong is a branch of Chinese medicine, so we're looking at circulation and internal organs. And you're going to find a difference. What does it feel like when the arms go out? What does it feel like when the arms come in? You know, it'll feel different going this way versus going here. <laughs> It's just interesting. What are we doing with this? Let's take a short break. So we're making circles with the arms. Elbows stay connected to the spine. Elbows face the ground. And just the movement of the hands. You want to get... You want to do this in a very relaxed manner. So like standing. We're using this movement, the circularity of the movement, to release your nervous system. Reusing the movements, you want to relax all the soft tissues in your body. You're using the movement. <laughs> like, like standing, nervous system, soft tissues, and release the joints. Everything happens from letting go. So as a, you, can, you can look at this as like an expansion. Can you relax and allow the expansion to happen? You can look at this movement as, as a, 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 a closing, a coming together. Can you re relax coming in? And can you relax going out? Can you release coming in? And can you release going out? meditation point of view, right, we can look at this expansion contraction. Sometimes uh, the letting go is happening outward, sometimes the letting go is happening on that phase of the movement. So, so we're training our, our um, we're training ourselves to be able to relax, moving away from the center, coming into the center. So it becomes balanced. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no. All good. Yeah. <laughs> so the joints downstream is going to be a real big thing. <clears throat> Because in, in Tai Chi, you see all this coiling that goes, that goes on. The joints and the soft tissues need to release enough to get that coiling. You know, we're doing the movement just on, on this plane, but after a while, there's, there's you know, we're, we're, we're doing the movement. You know, with that kind of movement, with that kind of motion. So, so I'm just presetting with this thing with the joints. What are we doing? So, so during this movement, release your nervous system. Use the circularity of the movement to soften your nervous system. Both directions, moving away from the body and coming back to the body. 
but this one feels different. These are the movements to relax all the soft tissues in the body. You want to get everything from the skin down to the left, the bones soften. There's, there are, um, technically when you're doing Tai Chi, it, it's not a linear motion. There's coilings and these twistings are going on in the soft tissue when you're doing the form. So the body needs to be soft enough so you can get the tissues to do that. And so, so I, again, I, I'm presetting these things. I mean, even in Yang style, right? Twist in, you know, like, like, you know, you got these twistings. Yeah, you're supposed to. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was kidding. <laughs> you know, so. It's harder in the legs because the fascia is thicker and the muscles are denser. And the tissues need to be pliable enough so that can happen. So how do you do that? So, 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 I, I, so we're, we're playing with these things to get the body to release so that you can do these things. I mean, it, see, standing is important because it'll get you in your body and we're deliberately looking at this releasing and it needs to go deep enough so you can access the tissues so you can do that. get to that. Um, so can you get a nice smooth movement from your shoulders out to the fingertips? And as the hands circle back, nice smooth movement coming back in. In and out. Soft and smooth. And if you pay attention to your arms, you feel places inside where it's kind of, it's kind of glitchy or stuck or numb or, or you don't feel that openness. So the practice is a process to open the body up so you can do these things. Okay. So if you just continue with the circles, your weight shifts to the balls of the feet and your weight shifts into your heels. The arms move away, your weight's in the ball of the foot, the arms come back, and your heels. Like in standing, you want to relax the psoas, right? You want to relax the lumbar vertebrae so that the sacrum naturally starts to elongate and drop. And it's that dropping that puts your weight and energy into the feet, and that rocking is coming from that. Well, the body is going to rise and fall, but you need to maintain that with the rising and falling. And again, it, it's a psoas engagement. So, like, you want to, the feeling is you're sitting into your legs. So, so this one's going to be a little tricky. Your knees are bent. Your butt's going to the ground. Your butt's coming up. Your knees aren't moving. So I, I can do this, right? Um, 
so my main charge is just going back and forth in space. Yeah. You want to avoid the knees move. The, the movement is coming from this area of your body. So when my hands come back, I'm dropping. My hands move away, I'm coming up. But the movement is it's here in the area of the inguinal crease and not in my knee. Right? Because if I do that, there, there's hardly any movement in my hips or pelvis. If the, when the knee stays fixed and it's my body that goes up and down, that puts all the pressure right through here. So again, it's pumping on the lymphatic system. We're looking at a flushing the lymphatic system and increasing blood flow in the body. Right, that the knees are going to move, but the movement is in the hip sockets. Right, so the Chinese call it the area of the body, the hua. And technically, it's energetic. If there's no anatomical thing called the hua. But in terms of anatomy, we're looking at the psoas muscle. So, what gets this movement happening is the psoas muscle. So the knees are fixed, right? Like standing, you feel your weight going into the arch of the foot. As my body goes up and down, I keep my weight in the arch of the foot. I'm getting movement in my knee. But where the actual movement is happening is coming from this part of my hips. And, and it, what it feels like is you're sitting in a chair. It's like there's a chair behind you and you're sitting in the chair. Yeah. Right, so if, if there was a stick or a chair in front of you and, and your knee is contacting that space, you need to go up and down without your knee coming away from that, from that object. Not only anterior pelvic tilt, but your pelvis neutral. Right, neutral. Yeah, we're, we're going to come look at this again in more detail. So the arms and legs bend, arms and legs extend. So you want to have a balance between how much movement you have in the lower body with the movement in the upper body. Yeah, there, there's like a, a balance, there, there's a place where they come into sync. So in, in the other class, it was getting lumbars to relax, so the sacrum drops and connects into your feet, and we're just standing, or, or we're going side to side, or we're, we're doing deep movements, there's, there's hardly any motion here, just having that connection. Now you want to move your whole body, maintaining that connection. So we're going to spend more time next week on this part. Again, the five bows, the bowing of both arms and the bowing of both legs. What are we doing? I want to look at weight shifting real quick. So, we are parallel like we're standing. Step out to the side and start getting your weight to go back and forth. Uh, as your weight goes back and forth, all those alignments from standing, you need to hold those together. So both feet are flat on the ground, ankles are open, the pressure is going from your knee into the arch of the foot, the pelvis stays parallel to the ground, spine's upright. So as you go back and forth, 
How well can you maintain with the light? So, so again, the movements are designed to pressurize the internal organ. That pressure word, right? We're increasing the load through the joints is what we're doing. So alignments are important so you don't injure yourself. So the common thing is that, that knee dropping. Whereas your weight shifts, people's hips go out. You, you need to maintain your alignment as the weight goes back and forth. Look at how are you shifting your weight? How are you getting your weight to go side to side? I mean, I'm being rhetorical. So in the beginning, what happens is most people shift the weight the way they walk. Right? So the physics behind walking is it's a controlled fall. Right? You lean forward, your momentum carries you forward, and you stick your legs out before you lose your balance. So people, that, that's one of the things people do with shifting weight, right? They they fall to get their weight to shift. Or they throw their weight and their hips go back and forth. So you, you want to avoid doing that. So you're using your legs to get your weight to shift. Push off your left leg to go to the right. Push off right leg to go back to the left. Maintaining those alignments. Attention to your ankles, your knees, and your hips. Make sure they're stable. I mean, you're, you're probably going to feel a little wobbly somewhere. That, that needs to go away. But the stability of the alignment needs to stabilize, which is important for standing. Standing is going to give you that stability. Is it hard to reach your feet on a mm -hmm. So you're sitting in the quad, you're sitting in your legs, and you're shifting, and the pelvis stays parallel to the ground. So the, so the spine stays upright. Right? Our, our chin is horizontal to the ground, and our eyes want to be horizontal. So as you shift, like each layer, you have a joint, everything's going horizontal. If I do that, I don't have that horizontal line. So we're going on your feet, horizontal on the knees, horizontal on the elbows, and then goes forward. Take each level where there's a joint parallel to the ground. Without twisting. Without twisting. Without rotation in the hip because there's a tendency you're going to feel one side you want to rotate or one side wants to come up okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at the lower body in the next class awesome